hearing continuance, I'll now call the meeting to order. Just as a reminder, before we get going, are we recording this for real? I mean, I know we are. Okay, this meeting's being recorded. Just so, just so everyone knows, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. I'll pass it over to Mr. Freed. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. So tonight we're back for the continued conditional use hearing of the YMCA of Greater Brandywine related to the Lionville Community YMCA. The applicant is requesting a conditional use hearing for the conversion of an exterior swimming pool to an exterior multi-use family activity area at the Lionville Community YMCA location. Uh, we're going to continue on with the applicant's case. Before we get started, though, I have one preliminary matter. Um, we had a number of requests for party status. The um, YMCA um, objected to one person, uh, Mr. Benjamin Joseph. Um, the facts are that that Mr. Joseph resides at 306, 306 William uh, Salisbury Drive. He testified that he lives about two miles away from the YMCA, the Lionville YMCA. Uh, he stated uh, that he believed he should have standing because he thinks that all residents have an interest in making sure that noise ordinances are enforced. Uh, he also testified that uh, he's a member of the Y and was a user of the pool. The, the Y objected to uh, Mr. Joseph's party status uh, as he did uh, not describe any unique impacts uh, and he was not in close proximity to the property such that noise impacts uh, would, the noise impact issues were, uh, would impact him. Um, this is a really a question as I explained the last time of legal standing. Uh, legal standing is a term under common law and under the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code that requires in order to be uh, a technical party with full rights of cross-examination of the witnesses, the person must show that they are affected by the application in the sense that they have a substantial direct and immediate interest in the claim. One way to show that is um, if uh, the person lives in close proximity to the subject property, generally living two miles from the property is not considered close proximity. Uh, as a member of the Y and a former user of the pool, uh, Mr. Joseph, you may uh, have issues with the Y's choices of amenities it offers its members. However, the reasons for those choices by the Y are not the issue before this board. So we are going to deny your party status request. Uh, the Board of Supervisors will be issuing a written decision. An appeal may be filed in the Court of Common Pleas of Chester County within 30 days. Um, and you still have a right as a, as a member of the public to, to provide public comments at, at the end of the hearing. So with that, we'll open it up to the ad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, my name is Patrick McKenna here on behalf of the applicant, the YMCA of Greater Brandywine. Um, we have two exhibits that we'd like to present this evening. I'd like to recall first uh, our engineer, uh, Joe Rosella. In front of you uh, is exhibit A9, which is a revised plan set. But I'd like to have Mr. Rosella testify to how we've uh, changed the plan set in response to comments from both the public as well as the board from the last time that we were here. Uh, Mr. Rosella is still under oath. So if it's okay, I'd like to call him uh, as a witness. And Mr. Rosella, you're still under oath? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you familiar with Exhibit A9? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. It's up on the screen here in front of us. Yes, it is. Can you describe to the board and to the public what changes, what changes the applicant made to the plan set from the last hearing in response to the comments that we received, both from the board as well as from the public? Okay. Uh, the, the first change that we were able to, to make after studying the condition was that we 
added a three foot wide sidewalk behind the existing curb be between the, the top of the basin uh, and where the uh, post and rail fence is. And that sidewalk continues uh, from the existing uh, trail or sidewalk along Devon Road up to the uh, up to a point where we're crossing the driveway to connect to the existing sidewalk. What will be the impervious cover after that is constructed? Uh, when we studied the tabulation, uh, we're just under 40%, which is what we're permitted. The area of that sidewalk is about approximately 343 square feet. Uh, so yeah, again, under just under 40%. Uh, we, we've also uh, showed the improvements uh, along Devon Drive that are uh, resulting from the a requirement from the uh, Downingtown East High School, which will be a pedestrian crosswalk, restriping, uh, some, and there's some signalization. This plan just shows uh, the striping, uh, the concrete island, and, and then the pedestrian crosswalk that's proposed in, in, in that location. There are some other uh, proposed improvements, but they're a little further up at the driveway where the Downingtown uh, East High School uh, driveway access is. Um, we've also updated the uh, impervious tabulation, as you just mentioned, to reflect the change in the sidewalk to show that we're still compliant with the 40%. Uh, we've added, it, you know, although it's not shown on this plan, but the conditional use decision and orders. Uh, on, on this plan, uh, uh, what we've also added on the parking lot side, on, on uh, we'll call it on the no north side of the site, um, is a 10 foot high chain link fence uh, where previously we were shown an eight foot fence. And we're also noted that that fence would be provided with um, an acoustical treatment. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, th this is the enlarged view. Uh, th this we also added as part of the plan. It's just an enlarged view of the uh, the, the multi-surface court play area. Now so, you're using this plan. Can you exactly can you show the board where we're talking about? Yeah. So so this is this fence was previously shown as eight feet in height. Uh, there was some discussion that it should be increased to ten feet in height, which we've done that, and uh, it was shown to have windscreen, and now it's shown to have a, an acoustical barrier. Uh, we've also provided six foot fence that is down that uh, encompasses the the existing deck and that fencing which is six feet high is also shown now with uh, an acoustical barrier uh we've also added some construction details uh those are the those are the the, the main engineering improvements that we made to the to this for the site in order to uh, add the sidewalk uh, in response to comments from the board did we need to remove any parking spaces from we, the site? We did not need to remove any parking. Those were the only questions I had from Mr. Rosella, who just for specifies in this disease plan. Uh, my next one is Denise Clay. We'll talk about the changes as well as the sound attenuating material pipes that we were making. Thanks for the questions. So, board have okay. any questions? Um, just to clarify, so the acoustic treatment will only be on the right side of the courts, or will it be all the way around? It will be all the way around. So the fence will okay. be inside of this plan, okay. as well as the six Okay. So that you're essentially creating a barrier all the way around, because the other of the two sides will be protected by the existing building. Okay. So basically, parts that are not surrounded by building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fence with uh, acoustic sound attenuating. Okay. Um, does anyone else have a question? So we're going to allow uh, further questions from the public. Uh, I'm going to ask that the questions be limited to the testimony we just heard tonight um, regarding the new information that was pre presented. Uh, Mr. Simonetti? Okay. And uh, Ms. Kohler and uh, Ms. Carpenter. I just have another question about whether or not, since you added the acoustic barriers, will you still be doing the sound study? Like, is that a consideration or? Yeah, not discussed doing sound studies. 
involved to use. Um, I'm sorry, I thought in the last hearing that was something that was discussed. That I don't believe so. I want to be right that we have prepared one. We have not at this point not in plans to do so. Instead, we're going to just go ahead and install the sound planning into the Okay. Am I allowed to ask one other question about the design? Um, I didn't remember to ask you this last time, sir, but I wondered if there were um, other ideas or any other designs considered, or if you were just asked to design like one space and put certain things in there. The, the design was provided to us okay. uh, from the YMC. So this is... Uh, this is this is their layout. Okay, and they asked for this, and you put it in that space. It wasn't like we have this space, and what could we put in? Um, yeah, they they provided that. To okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Marino. Sound barrier rules. My next witness will testify a little bit to what we've been able to track down. We have some details that we provided as um, she developed that uh, materials and all. Yes, the, the, the name of the company. We haven't committed to one yet. But this is an example that we have tracked down that um, we'll work with the town to figure out what's the most appropriate one that we're able to, uh, to utilize. Us. And we will have a data that to share it to the next one. So, sure. Uh, Mr. Denning, any question? Uh, Mr. Hogan. Do you know the answer to that? I can tell my next one. I, I, I don't. Um, I'll make sure if I'm going to say it. Uh, Ms. Pomante? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Basically, my question was uh, like Pete Marina's, but the sound barrier, 10 feet tall. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been around pickleball courts, but that sound bounces off the wall and goes up. I have a very good friend in Virginia Beach that her house is right behind. It's unbelievable. So you're saying it bounces off the... The sound actually goes up. The acoustic treatment treated wall or just a brick wall? Treated wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And had I not been down there and heard this, what is that? I don't want to object, but I have to because this we're supposed to ask questions now instead of statements. So yeah. Is there is there a question? Do you have a question for the witness? Okay, all right. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, Mr. Crick. Was there any talk about doing a sound study at all to understand if what is going to be procured will work to deafen the noise? Our role here was to design mm -hmm. uh, the, the court service, not to conduct the sound study. Okay, so I don't know. know as far as I know, no, not on the engineering, not on the civil engineering side, no. Okay, so that's being considered. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Mentokoski? Okay. All right. Do you have any redirect based on that? Okay. Thank you very much. Not not at this time. There will be a public comment uh, period at the end. I'd like to call my next witness, who is Denise Day, please. Oh, that's she's the big shot in the from the Y that didn't get to talk the last time.
Uh, Ms. Day, would you mind please stating your name and your place of employment? Denise Day, and I'm employed by the YMCA of Greater Brandywine. If we could have quiet, please. What do you, what position do you hold with the YMCA? I'm the president and CEO for the YMCA of Greater Brandywine, and I've worked for the Y for over 37 years. Were you authorized to file the conditional use application on behalf of the YMCA for the property at 100 Devon Drive in Euclid? I was. Uh, Exhibit A1 is a copy of the conditional use application that we submitted for this property. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Does the YMCA own the property at 100 Devon Drive? Uh, yes, it does. The YMCA of Greater Brandywine became the property owner when it merged with the YMCA of Upper Main Line in 2015. And uh, the Upper Main Line YMCA had owned and developed the Devon Drive property prior to that time. Did we mark as Exhibit A2 a copy of the deed for the property? Yes, it is. In general, the board has heard some through Mr. Rosella already. Please describe the intended improvements and changes to the site from what we currently have existing there now. Yeah. In general, we're proposing to remove the outdoor pool and surrounding pool deck, replace it with a combination of all-weather multi-purpose play area. The multi-purpose play area would be utilized in a number of manners, including for basketball, badminton, group X, shuffleboard, pickleball, and cornhole. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like me to pickleball. pickleball and cornhole, as well as general congregating area for our members or employees, including a fire pit. And we're proposing uh, to leave as is the existing deck with the canopy. Can you explain to the board and to the public why the YMCA would like to make these proposed changes to the property? Yes. So as leaders, we must make difficult decisions um, to ensure the health of our organization. Even when it's not popular, and and uh, and we certainly understand the disappointment. Looking holistically at our outdoor pools, we are shifting to a regional model that allows us to prioritize staffing four of our locations where we can deliver the best experience. We have limited resources, both in finances and in staffing, and we must make sound decisions so that we can be here to support the community into the future. There are several factors that went into our board's decision to close the Lionville outdoor pool. One, the condition of the pool. The pool is in need of extensive repairs. These are costly repairs further exasperated by rising operating staff and supply costs. Two, the national shortage of lifeguards. Pools across the country are having to make difficult choices due to the lack of lifeguards. While this national trend began prior to the pandemic, the current climate has only further accelerated the problem. Our organization provides free certifications and we have increased wages considerably, but continue to struggle to secure enough staff. And then the member experience. Pool usage at the Lionville Community Y has been on a steady decline. This decline became steeper after the pandemic. The lack of green space and space limitation make it challenging to deliver a strong member experience at the pool space. I do say, please note that we still have an indoor pool at Lionville, and we have two outdoor pools, both within a 15-minute drive of the Lionville location, 8.8 .8 miles away in either direction, our Brandywine and our Westchester branch. Both are free to use for our members. In addition, uh, we will still be operating 24 pools across the county, and 12 of them are outdoor. Does the current site still maintain an indoor pool? We do. Currently, the YMCA is limited to the use of this uh, outdoor area where the pool is from 9 a.m. until dusk. Uh, do you propose to comply with those same hours of operation for the multipurpose area? Yes, we do. So no changes are proposed? No changes to the hours of operation and agree to the same 9 a.m. to dusk uh, limitation that cur currently exists. Could you please also describe for the board programmatically how you intend to use the multi-purpose space uh, as the YMCA. What kinds of things do you envision occurring in that area? Yeah. The area is going to be used for members to enjoy. Depending on the season and usage patterns indoors, we may program the space or have it open for drop-in use. In good weather, we may schedule a morning yoga class outdoors or move the cycling bikes for a class. When the kids want to play basketball, it, that's pretty much all the time, uh, they will be able to take their game outdoors after school or on a summer afternoon. Families will be able to check out sports equipment and enjoy shooting hoops or a game of pickleball. Perhaps Friday evening family activities like shuffleboard, cornhole, or badminton would be followed by relaxing around a fire pit or talking with other families. 
At this time, we have not developed a schedule, but have the but having the area to be utilized year round to bring families together will be impactful. For those concerned about pickleball noise, we do not envision more than four hours of play a day on average outdoors, and only one court is dedicated to pickleball only. Now, we had some questions from the public just a minute ago about the um, um, equipment that'll be utilized out there. Uh, where do you envision and how do you envision it being utilized and stored? Um, so for basketball, for example, will it be out there all the time? Will it be moved around? Same thing for pickleball. Where is that stuff going to be stored indoors and then brought outdoors when the court is to be used in that fashion? Uh, there, all the things will be portable, portable nets and such, so that we'll have the multiple use. If somebody wants to be playing badminton, if they want to play volleyball, or if they want to be playing pickleball or playing basketball. So in order to make it multi-purpose space, they're, they're on rollers, the, the standards, if you will, and they'll be kept over along the along the side of the building. And normally what we've done, to be honest, we haven't gone this far of thinking on, you know, some of those um, uh, basic programmatic logistics. Um, we'll have equipment at the uh, desk that the members would check out to use. I realized that uh, yeah, other sites you have dedicated pickleball facilities and at those facilities, is it correct that sometimes you will host tournaments when they're dedicated simply to pickleball. Yes, there's no plans for any tournaments here. It's not the type of space that we've in, that we've created. If we were creating the space for pickleball only, we would have created it completely different. And because we're uh, recommending or agreeing, excuse me, to comply with the same hours of operation, there will be no outdoor lighting for use of this area. Is that correct? No, there will not. So since the last time we were here, uh, the Y has agreed to install sound attenuating material on the fencing around the area. Is that right? Yes. Exhibit A10 is uh, an example of some sound attenuating um, details that we have located as a possible use for this uh, site. Is that right? Correct. And is the product called Coost Defense? It is. And is it... Uh, Typically, is one of its uses to control sound from pickleball facilities. Yes, specifically. And yes. Does Exhibit A10 give some details and some photos of what the material will look like? Yes. It's an opaque material. Is that correct? Correct. I don't have any other questions for this witness. What I would say is with Exhibit A10, because we didn't have a whole lot of time to look into it, if there's other similar products, we're happy to consider those as well. We wanted to give you an example. This may be what we would go with if it's satisfactory to the township. As a potential condition of approval, we would certainly accept a language to the effect that whenever we identify what we'd like to use, we would make sure it was reviewed and approved by the township staff and that they were satisfied with that material. The board have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, thank you for this information. Um, has the YMCA looked into the possibility of utilizing some of the paddles or balls that are designed to be less intrusive sound-wise? I know there's some products that, because of this issue being understood as, as a noisy one, I know that they're starting to develop products. I'm wondering if that's something that the YMCA would... It's not something we've been more truest, I guess, but we have not looked into it. Um, I'm not hearing about them getting a whole lot of traction, but I have heard about them. Yeah. And do members of the Y that plan to utilize the court, can they bring their own equipment or would they, could they solely They can bring check? their own. Okay. So they could either bring their own equipment or right. potentially. They already bring their own, but we really see that this use is going to be more for families and youth. And so they may not, they may be trying the sport for the first time. It may be something that they get to do as a family together. It's a great sport because it's all ages, all abilities. Thank you. Well, so I just have one question about the four hour a day max for pickleball. Do you have an idea what time frame that would be or how are between the morning and between nine at night for sure? No, we, we don't like uh, oftentimes we're playing in the middle of the afternoon, but it, de it depends in the summer. It depends on the, it'll be ten, it'll be seasonal in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. People will play it even when it uh, gets a little bit colder, but because it gets darker quicker, obviously you're going to see it played more in the mornings and the afternoons. Cooler, they'll probably play more in the afternoons. So okay, so there there will be dedicated time slots 
varying per season. That's what, for... that's what we envision or could just be dropping. We really haven't got to the, the point of programming, but based on how we've programmed other sites and the amount of pickleball that we have in the gym right now, we don't have more than four hours a day mm -hmm. at all. So if if I heard the testimony correctly, I think there was an average of four hours. Is that what, the, what you were proposing? There might be a day that it goes along. It might be a day that it's two or there's none. Oh, so it's an average of four, not a yeah. max of four. Yeah, not a max. Definitely not. Max. No. Go ahead. Okay, I had some questions about the walls and the sound. So the the one, well, first of all, the the this is described and maybe um, I just want to make sure my understanding is a, is a viscoelastic acoustic material. To me, that means it's sound absorbing, not sound deflecting. Is that correct? Correct. I think that's how I, I think understand so, it. But yeah, we're not yet the experts on the material. Um, I believe that is correct based on the materials that I read on their site. Yeah. Because I think that makes a big difference because if you're just knocking the wall, knocking the sound off the, the wall again, very much going to make a difference. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's my understanding of, of the, the way I read it. That's that's what you're looking at. And that's what we would, we would want is yes. absorption, not a deflection wall. Uh, the, you know, I'm a little, so if you wanted to bring up the the wall, the six foot wall, and I'm a little concerned because that's, because that's set back from the, the, the actual playing court, the, the capabilities for absorbing or or even deflecting or doing anything for sound is going to be mitigated because the wave is going to be spreading by the time it reaches there. And it's going to go around the wall. Whereas the 10 foot wall being close there, I'm not, I don't have anyone near the same concerns because it'll be it'll be caught while the, you know, the wave's still rather smaller. So um, I don't know, are these envisioned to be on permanent? Uh, these are on a permanent wall, right? These are not going to be on the fence is not going to be moved on and off, right? No, yeah. no, they would be permanent. They'd be left off. I'm just a little concerned that that's not going to create enough of a, of a, of a, a barrier to the sound on that side of the, I, like I said, I don't have as much concern on the 10 foot side, but on the six foot because of setback. So we did look at whether we could put the material on the interior fence. Mm -hmm. The reason that we chose not to do that is a health safety welfare issue because it's opaque. And because we're going to have families there, if something happens, if someone gets hurt, parents want to be able to see what's going on with their children. Yeah. But that's the reason we didn't do it on that internal fence. Is there is there any thoughts to making that maybe an eight foot fence, or is that would you consider that? No, we didn't think it was necessary. It's a six foot fence; it's already there. Okay. Um, based on how far back it sits, you know, it's not like a ball is going to go over. Yeah, the... I'm not, no, right. I'm more this is the sound thing. Yeah, so, yeah. I understand the balls. Um, okay, so the question about the hours, I, and I understand you want to be able to have flexible um, scheduling and flexible programming. I do think, uh, you know, I think I sensed a, a little um, discomfort with the idea of having pick a ball up, especially in the wit summer hours up until, I think, 8.45 at night. Um, and I think that maybe we could have, a, a you know, an end time for pick a ball for, you know, or you know, percussive sports um at, you know at like i don't know 7 30 or something like that seems like a reasonable well i don't i hear you and perhaps on the pickleball but frankly my neighbors play basketball until eight and nine o'clock at night so i would hate to suggest that the kids can't play basketball until dusk because the same noise that the kids are making in the pools essentially it's a type of a noise impact I it's mostly on pickleball I know. I wish we wouldn't, but that's where we are right now. Uh, um, so if there's a certain cutoff time when we're done testimony, I'll speak with the client and see if there's something we can discuss about that. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think with, I think there's a big difference because I, I actually heard when you first testified, you said not more than four hours a day. I might have, I might have misinterpreted that, but now you're saying an average of four hours a day. Average. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think there's, I think there is a, there should be a maximum somewhere, um, even if it's an average of four hours a day, you know, at, at, at eight hours. and you say there's not enough demand for it, but I, I, I don't know that, you know, and there might, might be created demand, you know, when you build it, they might come. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but maybe we can think about, you know, no more than a no more than limit on, on the pitfall, even if it is an average of four hours a day. I understand that might not be your preference, but um, I think that that's a reasonable 
I think we got a reasonable approach. And I was going to say, I was going to ask about tournaments. So thanks for clarifying that. I was, I don't, I don't think that's an appropriate spot for them. No, it's not. So. It's not what it's designed for. Um, yeah, that's my questions. I just have one more. I was just reading the acoustic defense um, language in Exhibit A10. Um, it does say that the uh, the flexible material uh, gains an attenuation at those specific frequencies where rigid barriers have strong deficiencies. I'm just thinking of the uh, wall, using the walls uh, of the building. I'm wondering if the pickleball noise, and because we don't have an acoustic consultant to answer this question, I don't know if we can, but um, I'm worried about the pickleball noise ricocheting off the building on both walls because sound does ricochet off hard surfaces. I mean, it, it says so right here. So have you given any consideration to perhaps putting the, I know that there's a building there and it wouldn't preclude yeah. parents from looking in because they can't actually, see through the wall anyway. I don't actually know what's along those walls. I don't know if there's windows along those walls. I, I, I think we'd be happy to discuss it at the time, perhaps when we're doing the install. But in light of the fact that the board is also considering a max on the hours of use and and during the day, so essentially defining our program, I respectfully would suggest that's a little bit more than I think we really need to to do with a 30 foot, 33 foot building on that side for the sound. I'm not saying no. However, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we're ready to commit to doing that. We hadn't discussed it. I don't know mm -hmm. what it would even look like there, on the building this. and if it would be worth it. But we're happy to explore it at the time that we go to essentially file for the permit to install the material. Sure. I was thinking on the fence that's already that will, is being proposed there. Oh, on that side? Between the building, there's yeah. a fence between the building and the courts. Two is what you're saying. Yeah. Just I, I think that that's something we would definitely consider. Obviously, we heard what folks said and we're mm -hmm. we're sensitive to it and we want to be mm -hmm. we want to the Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, as we had initially proposed was the idea of let's get out there and see mm -hmm. it's willing to evaluate it and say, yeah, we, we need sound attenuation. We went ahead and said, okay, the sound attenuation. And I know you don't want to hear this, but we went out there and did our own test. Yeah. We're not. And we had people staged around. We couldn't hear anything but the traffic across the street. Who you could hear was the traffic. We had the balls out and all the paddles and we had people around. And I would like to think that there would be some trust that we could or put it in the, the, the agreement, obviously, that we could see. Mm -hmm. And if we need more, yes, we're going to be good, good stewards. We're going to be good neighbors. We understand. And I do. I truly do. I do apologize. I thought you meant on the building. I didn't know you meant along that, uh, the, along the fence. Yeah, so, yeah. again, we'll we'll talk about that as well. Okay. But I think, yes, I think you have a, an applicant and a property owner who is willing to explore that mm -hmm. possibility if that's uh, if that's needed. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. All right, uh, Ms. Kohler, any questions? Um, you mentioned that there would only be one pickleball court in being used at a time. There are four. No, no, one dedicated. One dedicated, so there is the potential that all four could be used within this time frame. So you could have four pickleball games going on at one time. If there's that kind of a demand, yeah, some of the pickleball not a lot of it, yes. And it sounds like you you feel that it's not popular enough, but from what I'm hearing in other YMCA's, there's a wait list to get into the pickleball courts. So, so that is my concern: is having four games at one time and hearing that. Okay. Well, pitch of that we're still hitting yeah there in the gym but um there's only one the one on the left is like a dedicated court for the fact that it will be fenced in all the way around that will provide the if you will and then the others are there so that more families could play but it could so, potentially be a, a pretty noisy day if all perfect. yes Ms. Carpenter? Yeah. 
So the dedicated pickleball court is all the way to the left on the screen. And the proposal for the sound mediation is all the way to the right on the 10 foot fence. And then the outer like perimeter fence around the outside. But your proposed dedicated pickleball for four hours a day or more is in the corner where the sound would bounce off of the two hard surface stone walls there. And you're saying that for security reasons, you don't want to put up an opaque barrier that would attenuate or absorb the noise, but that is the space where you put that pickleball. So when you designed this, what we other things- I have to get to a question or I have to object. It's quite a time to ask her question. What other things were considered for this space? What other activities? Public public purpose space, all the ones we just said. Where we could, so that we could do room back, so that we could do um, badminton, volleyball, basketball, pickleball, shuffleboard, cornhole. How many things would be going on at one time? And who regulates it? Like the other thing is, like, like, if people want, space. and it's, it's like the really okay, one at a time, one at one at a time. Just ask a question, let her answer. We program it like we program it in our space. That's there's a there's a lot of space out there. Just like there was a very large pool out there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be programming it. With the programming, how many people maximum would be able to use this space at any one time? I, I don't have an answer for that. I'm not sure I know that either. That may be controlled by particular biology by the township. They may limit how many people can be used like they would with any other space. Sure. Be truthful. How many people were allowed to be out there when the pool was open? Like the yeah. occupancy there? I don't have that off the top. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. So, um, and, and I'm not sure this is going to be even desirable given where the houses are, in, but if need be, and this might be a question for the engineer as well, could you flip where the dedicated port is to the other side? Um, we probably could certainly look at it. You're, you may have more sound. Or because you're well, that's, I, I, but, but I think we're going to have a lot of, yeah. Right, I and and you're right. It may not. It may make things worse. Look at okay. Space. Okay. Why don't I suggest this? This is what we're proposing. Right. If the township at the time we, again we file for building permit thinks it, it's better that we rotate it. Obviously, I don't have that plan, but I think we're open to that concept. We just haven't looked at it. And we don't have a plan for you to do that. But my, I guess my question was: Is there a reason that we know? today that it's not feasible to do that if it turns out it's okay no i again i think from our thinking was we wanted to tuck it into the corner next to the right. building as much as possible to protect the noise uh again if others want us to flip that around i think we're absolutely willing to consider to do okay it. um uh mr marino Correct about the pool hours, um, 11 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 7, Monday through Friday. We don't have a pool out there anymore. When you did? Uh, I'd have to go back. But we so, had the ability, uh, because of usage down, it, we may have had um, lesser hours last year. I don't know. I'd have to go. Prior conditional use decisions allowed the permit to use dynamics of those. Whether it was done every day or not, I'm not sure you can answer. And um, currently, there is a large trash container out by. Oh, hold on a sec. Can can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Can you speak up, please? All right. Currently, there is a large trash container out by, in the back, in the parking lot. Um, there was a basketball court there. It's in the parking lot, it, so it, it's not safe to have a basketball court. No, no, time. there was a designed basketball court back there. And you're not aware of this? I, I, we haven't used it in the last five years. No, it's not there now. There's a large trash bin there. But when it was in use, do you know how many uh, kids were playing basketball? I do not. Well, we do. Not many. 
Exactly. Everything changes. Our usage changes. We we grow and evolve um, as the trends change and what's popular. We didn't have pickleball either. Okay. Well, what we did have cars would drive up at night, shine their uh, heads. Okay. Change. Okay. Yeah, quite uh, Uh, Mr. Denny. Uh, Mr. Hogan. You had said that if um, you were designing this for all pickle, just for pickleball, it would be completely different. How would it be different? Uh, they would be all would be dedicated courts. They'd all have small fences uh, in between each court so that it keeps um, low fences, that it just keeps the balls in so you're not chasing the balls, the balls aren't going on to other courts, things like that. Is it safe to say there'd still be four courts? Yes. Okay, so you, you've got the maximum number of courts on that space. Um, we didn't look look at it that way but probably okay and then just quickly going back to the basketball court you don't know why it was removed that was before that was before we were right. managing well, it. as the gentleman said it was removed because no one used it um and then the I hours tell you that our indoor gym hey. okay sorry yes. yep. regarding the hours and i understand the conditional use was nine to dusk but the pool, as most people know, was not open that entire time. And it was also only used three months of the summer season. What you are proposing now is to use it up to 12 months a year. I have to longer object time, again. excuse me. No, excuse long... me, I have to make my objection. The rest All right, let's... The statement, it's not a question. You'll have an opportunity to make All right. So, so, sir, do, do you have a question? Is there a question in there? I guess my question is, the, the hours that you are hoping to use these courts is nine to dusk, seven days a week? The multipurpose area, we would like to have the ability to. Would you be willing to limit the pickleball play to four hours on average a day? You could take that out over a week or a month. I think we said that we would be willing to consider. Yeah. Okay, so that would be in the right house. Yes. We're willing to consider. Um, and just a final, do you consider yourself a, a, an avid pickleball player? Yeah. Me okay. and thank you. Okay, that's all. Uh, uh, Miss Pomatan, uh, Miss Pomanti. And Mr. Crick. So your other facilities, proximity, how close are they that have pickleball? The other like facilities. your other wives mm -hmm. that have pickleball. Like you referenced how close the the closest pools are. Mm -hmm. How close are the next facilities that have pickleball? They, the, every one of our facilities has pickleball. Okay, are they all indoor? They have indoor and some are outdoor. Okay, all right. Now, are that the ones that have outdoor, are they as close to residential properties as this one, as Lineville Y is? Closer. Closer? Okay. Yes. Well, that's good. So, did you do guys do, have, I'm sorry. did you do sound studies on those? They have no sound attenuation and there's no problem. Okay. So, my thought here is, well, how about this? Would you agree that a lot of the questions you're getting here right now would have been solved if you had done a sound study? I'll object to the question. I, I, I don't think it's relevant. Uh, I, I'm not. Can you repeat the question? I, asked her, I asked if she thought it would be easier to answer a lot of the questions here if they had simply done a sound study. I All think... the questions we're getting here are, are, are assumptions, and no one seems to know the answers of how the sound's going to travel or what this product is going to do. I'm going to let her answer the question if she can. Um, we have, based on our experience and our other facilities, mm -hmm. that would not have been necessary. Okay. And and our willingness as good neighbors to say, if there's an issue, 
that we were going to add the sound attenuation. And now we've moved forward and said, hey, let's put the sound attenuation in it. That'll make people feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we just said here a little bit ago that we're like to see is that we would try things. And if there's continues to be an issue that we would continue to be a good neighbor. Okay. Would you consider putting natural sound barriers along the fence uh, that butts up to Horn Place? In addition I, to what's there? I can't answer that without having more. Having more? More information. Okay. I mean, And then uh, Mr. Mitrowski is not here. Is that correct? Okay. Um, Mr. McKenna, do you have any redirect? I don't believe I have any redirects. That's the only witnesses I have. I was simply asked for permission of anyone to attend. And as I committed to the board, I'm speaking right up here to hear from the parties, public, and I'm speaking to my client without permission to the board. That's it. Let me just. Yes, the the group. Is there any objection to the entry of the exhibits A one through A ten? Okay, and they'll they'll be admitted. Ma'am, yeah. yep. Do you? Um, my name is Leah Joseph. Can you get closer to the microphone? Shorter. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um. I'm very disturbed. What's your name? I'm sorry. My name is Leah Joseph. I'm the mother of Benjamin Joseph. And by the way, he's Dr. Joseph, not Mr. Joseph. Oh, okay. Okay. Terrific. Uh, Thank and, you. Yeah, well, I'm just saying uh, he's very good at uh, research and studying. And he has put a petition online and gotten over 300 people signing it who object to the filling in of the pool. And so, I have. May, there, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Okay. Um, this is right now where the parties are putting on their cases and then at the very end. But he wasn't allowed to put his case on and he represents over 300 people. Okay, but it he, he was... You, you had turned him down before he even got a chance to do. I think he'll have an opportunity for public comment. Well, I'm disturbed that there's only one viewpoint. I think there should be two. So with that, we're going to turn the give the um, parties, the intervening parties, an opportunity to present a case if they would like to present a case. Um, in presenting a case, you'll be sworn in under oath. Um, you can you can do it as a statement. You don't have to walk back and forth and ask yourself questions. Um, and uh, if you have exhibits or uh, evidence that you'd like to present, uh, you can do that as well. And then you will. You know, because it's actual evidence, you will then, Mr. McKenna, and the board will have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, if you want to present a case, you also, at the end, can also have an opportunity just to make public comment. Um, so, with with that, um, Ms. Kohler, do you want to present a case? Ms. Carpenter, uh, Mr. Marina, Mr. Denning. Uh, Mr. Hogan and uh, Ms. Pomente, Mr. Crick. All right. So, with that, then that's that's the end of the evidence. Unless the board has any additional questions. I don't. Okay. Um, so, what we're going to do now is, unless Ms. McKenna, you have anything else, we can open it up for public comment. Oh, the board public comment is okay. I have a chance to speak with my client. Okay. So uh, we're utilizing uh, exhibit uh, A9 and the enlarged plan. Um, so what we talked about was the sound attenuating on the 10 foot along the parking lot and the six foot uh, all around the decking. Having spoken with my client, again, in consideration of Supervisor Bauman's uh, questioning, we do believe we can put it on the six-foot fence facing the building as well, so that essentially you'll be, the only place you wouldn't have it is on the bottom of that plan, so that, again, if there's parents down here, they can see in, as well as on the left side of the plan, so that if we have uh, uh, employees or parents who want to be able to see into the court, but we, we can and will agree to 
put the sound attenuating on that six foot fence up on the top of that plan. In addition, I did speak with Ms. Day and we'll commit to no more than four hours of pickleball per day as a condition. It is, well, does the board have any questions based on those comments? I don't know. No. Do any of the interveners, do any of the parties have a question? Yes, sir. Well, can you come up? Based on what was just presented there. So, and maybe I missed this. Are you saying that the bottom six foot chain link fence has no sound attenuating curtains or anything? So, not this one here. One is close to the, that's correct, because it's okay. You have to be able to, for us, be able to say, see in and out of the court. What we're proposing is to put it down around the deck and around the existing fence, as well as the 10 foot fence along the parking lot and then along the to address the comments about like the tourists of the sound of all the buildings. Is it possible to increase the, the height of the bottom fence to 10 feet in line with the, the one on the side? I'm sure it's possible. We're not imposing that. Okay. Thanks. Frank Hogan. All right, so with that, we're going to open it up to, to public comment. Um, if folks, um, as since anyone can make a public comment, um, if people want to just line up at the microphone. Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, comments, the, the policy of the township is that public comments generally limited to three minutes. So we'll ask that you try and keep it as close to three minutes as possible. I'm sorry. And give their names. Oh, and give your name and and if whether or not you're a resident. My name is Karen Kohler. I live directly across the street from the Y, specifically across from the the new parking lot, the newer parking lot. Um, so I was always able to hear the the sounds of the kids playing in the pool, um, and that never bothered me because that's a pleasant sound. It's not a high pitch. Basketball. I'm sure basketball went on, and I'm sure I heard it, but I didn't notice it because the pitch was not as strong or sharp um and from everything i've read and heard about pickleball it's it's it the pitch is much higher um so i so you can't really measure decibels to to determine if it's going to be um bothersome to the neighbors um I, i'm i'm afraid i'm not going to be able to leave my windows open in the summer in the nice months um i work from home so that's a problem um I enjoy my outdoor space in the backyard. I mean, most of the year, and unless it's freezing cold out. So I really just don't want my outdoor space to be disturbed by, by that noise. Um, I, I'm not convinced that the sound barriers are going to do an effective job. Because like it was said before, the, the sound can ricochet. Um, right at, even this time of year, I hear a neighbor in the distance, way in the distance, hitting a, a baseball with an aluminum bat and it's far away enough, but that repetitive ping, 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 I, I hear it and I focus on it and I, I can't help it. Um, I, so I'm really very concerned about having pickleball. I'm not against the sport. I've never played. It, it looks like fun. Um, I don't like the idea of um, not regulating what is used and, and some of the paddles might not be the soundproof ones. Um, I could ramble all and on and on, but it, I just really feel like pickleball is not appropriate so close to residents. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Joseph. Um, I did have a presentation prepared to present to the board, and I want to know if you uh, will be willing to hear the presentation. It will probably be longer than, than three minutes. You know about how long it would be? Um, maybe 10, 15 minutes in that area. I don't, so I don't think that's appropriate to allow that and not allow that for everyone. Okay. So I think we're going to, we're going to limit because of the time limit. Uh, if you can, I um, mean, you know, all right. Would, would, uh, you said I had an opportunity to ask questions. Are, are they included in my three minutes? Uh, I said you would have an opportunity to make comment. Oh, okay. So I can't ask questions. I have three minutes for comment now. 
you can ask if you want to ask the board questions they don't necessarily have to answer them but if you want to present them with questions and they feel that they can respond they will try to respond all right i'll i'll, I'll just make uh, uh my my three minute comment now then um you know i think that this plan is really a divisive one you know this pits the ymca against its neighbors here and it pits the pickleball players at the ymca against the general members and you know across the nation We've seen similar disputes that have led to comments such as painful. It has completely changed my life. This is in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, a pickleball court. And very distracting, the high pitch sound, you lose your concentration. In Wellesley, you have no idea how annoying pickleball can be. It's loud and repetitive. I can't sit in my porch and read anymore. My quality of life has been ruined. It, it, it goes on and on. Uh, these lead to lawsuits uh, in Falmouth, Massachusetts, one. A, a neighbor moved who lived 350 feet away, filed a lawsuit against the town zoning board, got an injunction. Um, and in this case, there was a, I believe, a 12 foot sound barrier, too. The, the sound barriers don't stop the lawsuits. Uh, the township ordinances say that it's the uh, YMCA's burden to show. To, to let's see, um, exactly. It's, it shall be the applicant's burden to persuade the board by substantial evidence that the proposed use will not cause ne ne negative impacts. And in fact, the YMCA has not provided any evidence of what the sound levels will be at nearby homes. However, the sound levels at nearby homes can be calculated. Um, I submitted to the board a sound study uh, which um, was conducted in um, Westport, Connecticut, and it shows, um, where I can give this to the board, very similar geometry, very similar geometry to, um, and distance, similar geometry and distance to uh, what we have at the YMCA in 85 Devon Drive. You see at 300 feet, uh, a home, at a similar distance, and that home was calculated to have a decibel level of 81 decibels. Now, 81 decibels is uh, the level of a freight train at 50 feet. It is an inappropriate sound level, and that is calculated with a 10-foot sound barrier. The sound barrier does not prevent uh, the noise from going over uh, the sound barrier to a home that, in this case, is about 300, 300 feet from the pickleball court where the pickleball court is being played. So this case has a lot of the features of um, a site which will lead to a dispute. First of all, just because it's so close to nearby homes, the YMCA's pool is within 150 feet of homes. But second of all, because there's no acoustical expert who was involved in the design of these courts, as I had suggested in the uh, first part of the hearing, just rotating the courts 90 degrees might have a small effect um, on, on the sound. But more importantly, acoustical experts in this case uh, would have to raise the point, which was raised in this hearing, that there is a 30-foot wall on one side of the courts, and that is going to reflect the sound um, up and over any barrier, let alone a six-foot barrier, which is far too, too low. So there are acoustical properties of this particular site, in addition to the proximity uh, to homes, which would be very concerning to uh, acoustical experts. Um, and you can look at Spendarian and Willis or, or Thornton Acoustics, and, and both of those uh, firms uh, have information about um, the, these issues. All right, so we're running up against the mint. Do you, do okay. You can't hear All right, here's, here's a quote from, from um, Thornton Acoustics about sound barriers. Although this approach, that is sound barriers, appeals to erroneous conventional wisdom, which dramatically overestimates the efficacy, the actual performance of a noise barrier is highly predictable and relatively poor for this type of site. Pressure is a field phenomenon and does not simply propagate in a line of sight. Placing a barrier between the source and receiver does not block the sound. Instead, sound waves diffuse and spread over the sound barrier. It is useful to envision smoke propagating over the landscape to help in understanding how sound propagates. And again, um, in the 
for the home that I showed you, the sound level at the home was uh, 81 decibels. And Fortinus Acoustics determined that a 10 foot wall, not a six foot wall, would reduce the sound level only by five to seven decibels. And that's 281 decibels. It's not uh, from it. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. My name is Holly Pegg. Uh, I am a resident very closely adjacent to uh, the YMCA. If I had a fancy pointer, I would show you. We were right up top above there on the other side of the Y. Um, I did attend the previous meeting, but on Zoom, and I nowhere saw that if you attended on Zoom to participate, you actually couldn't participate. So I would like to ask if I could be considered a party. And where where do you where do you live? I live at two three three Horn Place. Mr. McKenna, do you have any objection? Bear with me for one second. You understand that at this point, all the evidence has been in, but giving party status would, in the appropriate situation, give you an ability potentially to appeal. Okay. Two three three Horn Place. I did. No. I also re received that. Um, and so can you give me your name again? Holly with a Y, Peg, P-E-G-G. -G. Okay. All right. You will be granted party status. Thank you. I told you not to. I told you not to. My name is Frank Hogan. Okay, uh, a quick news search, some of this will be repetitive. Um, quick news search reveals how frequently the installation of outdoor pickleball courts impacts okay. neighbors. So we've got, just for the court reporter's sake, just yes. slow it down. Sorry. Disturbs the peace and results in litigation. The Y has conducted no outreach or engagement with the neighbors. They have not communicated the planned closure of the pool directly to Y members. They buried this information six layers deep on their website. Eliminating one of the, the few outdoor pools in the area is a mistake and will negatively impact families in the community. The Y was previously given waivers and variances by the township to expand their facilities, thus enhancing their revenue generating daycare and summer camp offerings, enabled the building of a gymnasium, fitness center, studio rooms, indoor pool and the expansion of the outdoor pool. We are here today because the township accommodated the wise desire to expand. The outdoor space was part of the approval and a reasonable person would assume the outdoor pool space would be used only during the three month summer season. The Y now intends to use the space up to 12 months a year with the justification that there were no seasonal limitations put on this space in the original approval. In the last meeting, the Y advised that in conjunction with the closure of the outdoor pool in an apparent concession, Lionville members would be given access to all outdoor pools in the Y's portfolio. What they didn't share at the time is that all members of all Y branches will be given access to all outdoor pools. So the apparent concession isn't quite what they led us to believe. I call that deceptive and sadly it fits a pattern that has emerged. The Y expansion was kicked off with a capital campaign that I worked on and which my family contributed. Residents and businesses were solicited and made financial contributions to the Y with the expectation that the Y would continue to offer the community an outdoor pool as part of their program. The Y has now decided to shut down the outdoor pool because it's impacting their bottom line. A quick review of the Y's latest financials reveal income increased 19% year over year, Assets increased 20%, while expenses only increased 8%. Somehow they were able to keep expenses low. The outdoor pool has been closed for two years. If proper maintenance and repairs had been done in a timely manner, the pool would likely be opening this summer. The Y has the financial resources to repair the pool. They're simply choosing not to. The Y is a nonprofit organization and enjoys tax ex exempt status, yet they operate like a for-profit business. It's cheaper just to asphalt over the pool, paint some lines, and benignly refer to it as a family activity area. While very few people play shuffleboard or badminton, 
and there's already multiple basketball courts inside the Y. The outdoor basketball court at the Y was removed because no one used it. Don't be fooled. Despite what we've been told, this space will be used exclusively for pickleball. Closing the outdoor pool is a betrayal of the trust the township, the residents, and local businesses extended the Y during their expansion. The public notice of this proposal made no mention of pickleball courts, yet the planned space is dominated by four courts. By doing this, along with not announcing the decision to close the pool, the Y has misled the public to minimize the potential pushback from members and neighbors. They are hoping this proposal just sails under the radar. Can you wrap up, sir? Because we're yeah. A little... What makes these tactics more concerning is that Denise Day, President and CEO of the Y, is retiring in June and won't be involved much longer. Quoting from the retirement press release, when Day isn't hard at work in her offices at Westchester, she's likely hard at work on the YMCA pickleball courts. Day's passion for pickleball is more than a hobby, it's a strategy, one that is characteristic of her leadership style and perhaps will be her legacy, end quote. I don't think the township residents should pay the price of burnishing anyone's legacy. I also wonder if one person's focus on pickleball unduly influenced the decision to close the outdoor pool at the expense of the community. One other point, outdoor pickleball courts are currently available through three of the eight Y branch locations. Two of these locations, Brandywine and Upper Mainline Y, exist on plots of land that are significantly larger than Lionville. The third branch is Kennett, which appears to have about the same footprint as Lionville. But here's the catch. They don't actually have them on their property. The Kennett pickleball courts are located off-site in the 106-acre Anson B. Nixon Park. The Lionville site is too small for outdoor pickleball courts. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Marion Marino from 227 Horn Place. Um, this is uh, a pickleball that has sound barriers. And this and this is four courts away. You guys can't hear it. It's pretty loud. But I'm going to say, like someone else mentioned here, hearing a bat, hearing a ball hit a bat, that's over at LYA. And we can hear it on our back patio. The sound, doing a sound study shows that the the sound travels this way. And if you put a, a pickleball in that area, now it's going to go the other way too. It's just going to come up and we're going to all, we're all going to hear it where we are. And what I'd like to say is how many of you would like a pickleball court next to your house? I don't think anybody would. It's distracting. Our, our house is in the cul-de-sac. We can see the pool and we can hear all the noise, all the kids that are on the field. Kid noise is good. Everybody's having fun. This will be irritating. We'll, we'll never be able to sit on our back patio because we can hear it and we can see it. If they want to put pickleball, they already have courts inside. They can enclose this area and, and put the whole thing inside. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be up to us neighbors to have to listen to that all day long. Randy Hogan. I'm just finishing his little comment. <laughs> um, the noise created by four outdoor pickleball courts involving up to 16 players all day long will likely violate the township noise control ordinance. Pickleball, pickleball noise is excess, excessive, constant, and causes stress and anxiety for neighbors with high-pitched pop, pop, pop sounds. It is percussive pop that pierces the air and would be heard up to 12 months a year. Multiple lawsuits have been filed around the country resulting in the shutdown of pickleball courts. The Y has acknowledged they conducted no sound or noise studies on existing pickleball courts. Sound from the proposed pickleball courts will reflect off the existing Y buildings and be directed towards residents preventing them from quiet enjoyment of their residential premises. That's quoting from the Township Noise Control Ordinance. Um, the township previously rejected a Y proposal for a skate park due to noise concerns. Recent construction projects in the township underscored the reality that the township's control over certain projects is limited at times. This is not one of them. 
The supervisors have the authority to reject this application and protect residents from unnecessary noise. And we urge you to do so. Mr. McKenna, do you have any? Oh, sure. Yes. Hi, Ed Bauer, 602 North Whitford Road. I live directly across from the Y. Uh, we bought our house in 82. And shortly thereafter, somebody told us they were going to build a Y across the street. We're like, oh, great. And uh, our kids were born later on. And uh, we enjoyed the pool over there. Uh, my wife took exercises class over there. And uh, we enjoyed the Y. Uh, six or seven years ago, I forget exactly when. Uh, the Y merged and they became, they changed from a little local community Y to a corporation. And uh, they say nonprofit. I'm a little skeptical on that. But uh, I've had a lot of problems with the Y over the years uh, after it was construction. I'm downhill. I get all the runoff going across my property. And it has done some damage to my property, but it goes to the woods. So I've kind of let it go. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as pickleball is concerned, uh, the kids at LYA, I hear the baseballs, uh, I hear a crack here, a crack there. Uh, it's, it's kids playing. It's okay. But from my understanding and the stories that I read, uh, neighborhoods that have pickleball, uh, it's a constant all day long, bang, 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 bang. And Everybody, all the stories that I've read, people are very, very unhappy with this constant loud noise. And uh, I am not in favor of this at all. Uh, my wife and I like to enjoy our summers outside on our porch. And uh, this would not be conducive to enjoying ourselves. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. wanted to add something um there is um a there are pickleball courts being built um the senior uh, senior park across from the wawa so we have uh, our houses are like kind of right now we're going to hear it on two sides so i just kind of wanted to mention that so that's uh it's a concern even having more and more and more noise we have the traffic we have you know the school we have all that and now now this and on a lighter note, I have a parrot that mimics noises, repetitive noises, very accurately and very loudly. So I'm going to surely hear it inside my house in no time. Oh, gosh. Hi, I'm Tammy Crick. I live at 2334 in place. Um, I just have a question, I guess, if anybody's even tried to find a positive accolade to having a pickleball court, I don't think you're going to find it. I don't think you're going to find a residence that has put online. I am so excited that there's a pickleball court in our neighborhood. And I think that the size of the internet might tell you something. If they've built these and you have not one positive thing coming out of it. The other thing that I find interesting is the strategy of build it now and ask for forgiveness later. Why is the business doing that? Why are they not doing the sound study and giving us that information ahead of time? I mean, we all grew up with that. Oh, just try it and then ask for forgiveness later. I think that's a really poor business strategy. Thank you. And just so folks know, we did receive a number of emails um, with comments that will be included as public comment along with the record. Some of the folks spoke tonight, but they'll also have their emails included in public comment. Mr. McKenna, do you have any comment? Sure. Uh, can I help the parrot? issue. I appreciate that. Um, so I do think we've met our burden. We did present evidence uh, from uh, Ms. Day in particular through their experience with other outdoor wives, through her experience testing it at the site, as well as the general knowledge of the noise, frankly, that's coming from Devon Drive. It's a cut through so much so that you're going to have to install the uh, traffic mitigation along there. Uh, so I do think we've met our burden. Secondly, we're not required to do a sound study under your ordinance. So we didn't do one, particularly given the experiences that we have at another location. We do have an obligation, however, to comply with your noise ordinance that's in place 
And as we did with the pool, we intend to do so. So that's what it, uh, Ms. Day means by being a good steward and a, and a good neighbor. Um, the Kennett Y property, respectfully speaking with Ms. Day, the CEO, that's not correct. It just isn't. The, the pickleball courts are on their property. I, I, I don't know what the gentleman was talking about, but I did, I did want to at least uh, address that. And then we're putting in, we heard the comments we, 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 from the board and from uh, the residents in terms of the impact. Board has made a programmatic business decision. You are correct. And that is their right to do so in the same way that I wouldn't tell any of the members here how to run any of their businesses. And that's not the purview of the board. And unfortunately, that's where we are. And so even if it's denied, the pool is not going to reopen because that's not a program decision that this board of directors has made for the site. I can't change that. It is, it is what it is. What we're trying to do is move forward and figure out another avenue that we can utilize the space. And hopefully what we have proposed to the board, particularly with the limitation on the four hours and the sound attenuating, as well as the sidewalk to address an issue, frankly, that we have no obligation to address at this time uh, is sufficient for the board's consideration. I thank you for your time. Thank you for making the time for the special meeting and coming back. I do appreciate that. Thank you. So. Um... Just a couple housekeeping things. We're going to close the hearing and close the record. Um, the Board of Supervisors has 45 days uh, to prepare a written decision. Um, and the written decision will be uh, sent out, probably be voted on and available um, at the meeting when it's in the in the next, uh, not at this next meeting, but the meeting after that, likely. Um, an appeal may be filed in the Court of Common Pleas of Chester County within 30 days of the decision. If no appeal is filed, the decision of the board becomes final. And with that, I think we can close. Madam Chair? Oh. Okay, to close the, the hearing. Okay. okay. So we're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry.